Good morning, everybody. We have our brother uh, Cecil Paxton coming this month. To healing. He's going to minister, teach, uh, teach on it. And I, I believe there will be a mighty move of the Lord. But I want us to look at something. I've been listening to his teachings and that, and it really stirred in me that, that Christians a lot of time have a, a lot of trouble receiving from God. Y'all agree? I don't know why this is, but we really seem to have trouble in this area. <clears throat> and I'm including myself at times, lots of times, that I seem to struggle. I know it's God's will. I know what His Word says on things, but sometimes it takes me quite the walk to get these things to manifest. So I asked the Lord about it, and uh, He showed me some things, and I want to sh show them to you. If you would, uh, turn to Matthew uh, chapter 14. It's a story y'all very well know. But for the sake that other people that are out there that have not heard this story, I want to read this to you. Jesus has just fed the 5,000. And now, something I've looked at many times in, in his word uh, on this next story, and I, I found some things that are really interesting, and I want to share them with you on this. Y'all know this story, but let's go together on God's word and look at this. Y'all there, Matthew 14? Look at verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. He had just ministered and fed 5,000 people. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. He's getting along with his father, amen? amen? And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, look at this, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch, and this is from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. This is this is a time of night when a lot of things happen. Amen. Y'all ever been woken up this time of night, 3 a.m.? I don't know how many times I have been awakened during the night Amen. and turned to my clock and it be 3 a.m. straight up. I thought this was interesting. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Why would they think that? I looked up in some of the historical things and they said at this time period, you know how traditions and superstitions, that when people died, that at night... In the night like that, the spirits were believed to uh, be seen walking on the uh, sea at night. That's odd to me. You know, but we have our traditions here. You know, how I'm not going to go into them, but you, you've heard the different superstitions. And But they believed him to be a spirit walking on the sea. Now, the wind is getting it. It's contrary. Dark of night. Do you see this in your mind, church? And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying it is a spirit, and they cried out for what? Fear. They cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, and be not afraid. All right, you with me so far? He's out here walking on the sea. They're going to the other side where they were sent by Jesus. And they look out and here is an individual walking on the water. And see the, see the waves? Do you see it, church? The white caps on the water. See it? I can see it. Jesus is walking across there. And the thing that comes out of our Savior's mouth immediately is be not afraid. Be of good cheer in your storm. But they had fear. And that is the key word today on receiving fear. Do you see this? Fear. Let's go on. Be of good cheer. It is I. It is your King, your Savior, your Redeemer, your Healer, Jesus. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Peter is like me. He has foot and mouth disease. Y'all ever get that? I mean, I get that disease a lot. 
I, I love old Peter because I, I can relate to him. You know what I'm saying? He's always saying something. I'm like, if it be you, Lord, who else would be walking on the water? If it be you, Jesus, the one I've seen do all these other things, he knows. You know, come on. It's Jesus. Bid me come. Now notice who asked who. Peter asked the Lord. Okay? This is something I want you to look at. Peter asked him. If it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, look at this. Come. Come. One word. One word. No Listen. No explanations. Come. One word. Amen? Amen. I'll show you something. In that one word, in that one word from your king. Amen. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, this is amazing. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. Amen. Can anybody say miracle? These are not stories picked out of somebody's vivid imagination. These are from the Holy Spirit of the living God. Amen? That's truth. That is absolute truth. Peter, can you imagine? Now here, I want you to see this because I want you to imagine what is going on so that you have some visualization working because you need this in your life. You need to visualize yourself being delivered. You need to visualize yourself being healed. You need to visualize yourself being set free. And it takes one word from your king. One. You hear me, church? One word spoken by Jesus to somebody that has faith allowed this man to walk on water. If I go no farther, we can make a sermon on that all day. Amen. I'm telling you, this is amazing. Peter asked him, can I come to you? Remember when the leopard asked him? If you will, I could be healed. I will. I will. Can I come to you, Lord? Now listen, he's hollering over the, over the sea and the, and the waves and the contrary boistering wind, right? We're in this ship in the dark when spirits walk, when there's fear. From 3 to 6 a.m. when weird stuff happens in the world. It just does. And they're out there, and here's this guy walking, and Peter says, you know, he's holding on. Some of them may be going, <laughs> throwing up. I don't know what's going on, but there's a mess, you know. And Peter says, good old Peter, can I come to ye? Come. Come. And he climbs out of this thing and gets on. Can you imagine this? Oh, oh. The first step was a miracle. The first step was a miracle. Holy Race stricken. And he's going to his kingdom. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now listen what happens. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. Look at verse 30. But when he saw, when he saw the wind boisterous, he was what? He was afraid. Why would you be afraid now? I've already stepped out. I mean, that would, you would think I'd have done cartwheels and flips to him. When I backed out and felt that the water suspended me, I'd have been like, man, this is so cool. Ooh, waves, you know, shh. Look at this. Hey, boys, take a look at Peter. <laughs> right? Amen. And he gets fear, the Bible says. Fear, Why? Because that's what your enemy does. He saw. He, he stopped just for an instant using his spiritual eyes and he used his physical eyes. And he said, man, this water's rough. If the water would have been so smooth that I could have skipped a rock on it from here to Paducah, it's still a miracle, amen? So who cares if there's a wind? We do for some reason. How many words did it take from his Jesus? One. 
one come was enough to walk on water, at least for a minute. He was afraid, verse 30, and look at the next thing, and beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord save me. Next thing I want you to look at. He did not go under immediately. You find this odd? If the, if the power of God just quits, the wood don't just take just, and I'd be underwater. But it says beginning, he began to sink. Why? Because his fear was escalating. You know what I think happened? And this is, this is just me. This is just me. But you think for yourself. He's walking on the water. It says beginning he was walking toward Jesus. Amen? Amen. Alright, and now it says fear come in. Something he seen distracted him off this. Amen? Amen? Something he saw, the Bible says, caused him to be afraid. And with that fear come his hindrance to receiving. His goal was to come to his king. But he became afraid and then he began. He didn't just dash underwater. Don't you see how the enemy works on his church? Amen. You get a word from God and you start walking toward it and then fear, fear, church, comes into you. Maybe some, something somebody said. Maybe a pain that you haven't had. I don't care what it is. Can you see it? Can anybody agree with me on this? Then we begin to sink. Satan just don't snatch the rug out from under me and I collapse. I begin to I begin to fall away. I begin to think adverse thoughts to this. This hindered him getting his victory through his Messiah. Amen. Amen. He began to sink. I thought this was awesome. Can't you just see it? I'm here and I'm walking on this, and all of a sudden then it's over my feet, maybe. And, I, and and just one second now, I take my eyes off. Jesus and the word come because I've got my word. Like you in here, church, you have your word. God has told you what to do. Now, I can't tell you what He told you, but you know. You do. God has given you a word, and it only takes one from your king to do the miraculous. Amen? It does. One word. But fear come on him, and then I, I see it that maybe the water come over his feet. And I started getting a little more fear. Uh-oh, uh-oh, hey, hey, something's wrong. Something's not right. And, and, and the next thing, to my calves, and now the wind's got me, you know, really, it's, it's a rocking and a rolling, this wind. See it? And it's cool. It's cold. The water's cold. And it's dark out here. And in the depth of that ocean is death. It's death to me. Cold, gripping fear. And, it, and it's coming. I'm beginning to get more and more afraid in my situation. So I'm saying? My situation is gaining ground on me. I'm becoming more afraid. Now, I'm not even sure that I've got a word. I'm, I'm pretty sure he said come, but the wind was blowing. See it? I see it. I've been there. I have. Some of you are there now. Fear come on him and he began to sink. Now let's look at what the king of kings does. He cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? I have to ask myself that same thing. It's real easy for me to read it though and say, I wonder why I doubted. If I could have stepped on the water, I, there would have been no fear in me at all. Has anybody prayed for anything and received from God in here? Anybody at all? You have? All right. Is there anybody in here that has not? Because I want to pray for you later and show you something wild. So we've all seen and received from God in here. Amen? Okay. So why do we doubt then the next time? Fear. Fear. Maybe this time He won't come through. Maybe this time... Maybe this time I ain't been good enough. You know, maybe this time the storm's a little too rough for God this time. Fear. I looked at this and read this before and I thought, you know, what caused that to that? You know, when I thought immediately it was the waves. It wasn't the waves. 
It was not the waves. I'm telling you, if the water would have been as slick as glass, it was a miracle. You hear me? Now, I look as a headache. It's no big deal for God. I've prayed and had headaches go. I had a, we've got a man we work with. I wish he was here that suffered migraines for quite a while, didn't he, John? One prayer. One hearing the word that Jesus heals today. He's not had a migraine since. Amen. Thank you, church. However, when the individual comes in stricken and eat up with cancer or any life-threatening disease, does God's power dwindle from that of the prayer of the headache? Or is it my waves have put fear into me? Church? This is how I see this. Fear stops me. Fear stops Peter. And fear can stop you. It can. Because it's the Word of God and we're to learn from the Word. Amen. I can stand on this truth. Fear caused Peter to begin to sink. He began to sink. by As the fear crept up in the cold and the water and the waves and the wind, everything, and he took his eyes and his spiritual intellect off the one word it took to sustain him on the water come he began to sink and then boy fear really gripped him and he screamed Lord save me I'm going down don't you care immediately the Lord caught him up and when they were coming to the ship the wind ceased imagine that Then they that were with him in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Fear. Fear stopped him from receiving what the Lord God had for him. Amen? I want to show you another story, if you would. Mark chapter 9. I have taught out of these teachings, and you can never feel your gullet on God's Word. You can't get enough of God's Word. I'm telling you. It's awesome. Every time you read it and ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you, He'll show you something else. Amen? This is amazing about the Word of God. There is always something for us positive in God's Word. Always. And you know the one thing that you can't get Christians to do or fight with? The Word. I'm telling you, I mean this no disrespect. I don't want to hurt your feelings. But if you sit and line the people up and ask them how many times did you get in God's Word and stand on it, you'd be amazed. You would be amazed. I believe this to be all truth. And I don't mean no disrespect. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ. Amen. You know the loneliest person I think that is there, that is here today, even in the church? The Holy Spirit. I do. I think. And he is a person. He's not an it. He's a he. And he he never leaves you. And he never forsakes you. Amen. And I'm telling you, we shut him down so many times. We'll turn the radio up, turn the TV on. Anything but that. Why? Why is that? When he's the one that guides me on in all truth. When He's the power source in me, why don't I plug into that? Anyway, that's another teaching in itself. Amen? Mark 9. Let me stay on course. Lord, stay with me here. I love this story. I have learned so much from this story. And I hope you get something out of this too. I'm in uh, Mark chapter 9. <clears throat> Jesus has, has come down from the Mount Transfiguration. His disciples have had a problem with a young man. <laughs> they had no luck casting out a spirit. And they're about to confront the king of kings with the trouble. Are you ready? Chapter 9, verse 14. Y'all there? And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them. And the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, I love this, what question ye with them? He's wanting to know, why are you talking with my disciples? What's going on? 
And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he, listen, he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out. And, and they could not. They could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you and how long shall I suffer you? Bring him, bring him to me. And they brought him unto him. And listen to this, church. Listen. And when he saw him straight away, the spirit, spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, look at this. How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. All right, you with me? Here we go with the visualization. I guess I just like doing this. I have to see it in my mind. And then it becomes truth to me. I've read it in the Word of God. Now I've got to see it. He's just come down from the Mount of Transfiguration. You see it? And, and there's a multitude around his disciples. And he says, what are you asking of them? And this father comes up and says, I've got this son. <laughs> and he's got a spirit on him. And I went to your disciples, your boys... And I was going to have them heal him and cast this thing out, and they couldn't do it. Now look at the Lord. It hurt his feelings. He loves them. He loves them. And he's empowered them. Amen. I don't have to go back to Scripture. We know this, right? Okay. They're empowered to heal the sick and cast out devils. Thank you. That's right. Okay, they don't do it. And the Lord knows. He knows. Now think. He knows I'm going to be going. These boys got to carry on the church. Doggone it. They can't cast this one out. Now look at the King of Kings. I, I love this because that's why I say I wish you could see my Jesus. He, he's something. I mean, he's something. You need a hero? Pick Jesus. I'm serious. Pick Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> he comes to the Father, and here's this boy, and this spirit now, the spirit, it, it, it's got him growing in his teeth, and he's foaming, and he's. He, He's, he's thrashing. Can you, can you see this scene, this boy? Throwing himself down. Uh, uh, uh. Hear it? And the spirit is tearing him. Have you ever seen anybody have an epileptic fit? Or choke? Or anything like this? It's horrific. It's scary. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. And this boy's doing it right there. And this is what bluffed the disciples. Because the spirit, it, it tears this boy. It's like a sore that's bleeding and pus. And it's disgusting to watch. Amen? And it breeds fear in us. But look what the King of Kings does. I can almost see that boy throwing feet. You know what, Jesus? Huh. How long has he done that? And here's the Father. You with me? Look, look. Since he's a kid. Jesus. All right. He's not bluffed one bit. Amen. Amen. I got one man in here who's with me. Me and him will go somewhere. I said, he's not bluffed one bit. Amen. Jesus is not wallowing in fear because of some demon spirit that wants to throw a little hissy fit on the ground. Amen? Okay. He's not. My king sits there and looks at him. How long has he done this? Since he's a child, God. Since he's a child, my king ain't. There ain't one tremor in his hand. His voice don't crack one time. Not one. I guarantee you. And oftentimes, verse 22, it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. It sounds like there's a suicidal spirit in this. Amen? Next verse. Y'all are with me, right, church? But if, if, listen to me, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. He is throwing himself on the mercy of the King of Kings. Amen? All right, now I'm going to show you a key to receiving. I hope somebody is listening. I really do. Because the Holy Spirit showed me this. This is not 
me. Okay? He's coming to the Lord. He's got an absolute problem. Anybody else in here got a problem? Oh, yeah. Do you? Okay. Because I get them. And if you don't, you need to be teaching me. But I get problems and I want to know how to receive from the King of Kings. Amen. Now, I'm telling you, I'm terrible to just give him all my little troubles and I whine and I complain and I, and, 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 and I do all this. Oh, God, help me. And I throw it all at the feet of Jesus. Amen. You know what the king did right here? Look what the king says. Jesus said unto him, if, let me put it this way, if you canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now look what the man did. He threw everything on God. You know why? Because he's a sovereign God. And I, God, I want you to heal me. I want you to heal my kid. I want you to fix my marriage, fix my finances. You fix it, God. You fix it, God. We want him to do everything and we don't want to do nothing on, on our part. You know what the Lord says? If you can believe, if you can believe, you can get it. Because all things are possible to them that believe. But let me tell you something, beloved. It ain't possible for the unbelievers. Can I have an amen on that? We want to put everything on God. God, just heal me. God, just deliver me. God, just do this. God, just do that. Don't we? And just do it, God. Now, I don't want to have to get in the Word. I don't want to do this. And I don't want to... I just... Boy, it sounds like I'm angry. And I'm not. Amen? <laughs> this, no, really, Maria, this is excitement. Because I've done this, okay? You do it, God. You're sovereign. You can do anything. You know, how many have heard, if it's thy will, then I can get this? I know what his will is because I've read what Jesus done. Amen? That's right. I know what the Father's will is. I've read the book. I've read the book. You can't trick me. Amen? But I have done this. I have put everything, God, you just do it, God. I'll just wake up tomorrow and then, you know, that, that little rainbow and the little Tweety birds will be, remember, you know, everything's great. And I'll just lay here in my hope. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Yeah. Maybe today I'll get it. Maybe I won't. But I, I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep uh, believing God that you will do it all. Look, the Bible says we can cast all our care upon Him. Amen? But it also says He requires things. Like what, Rob? Belief. Standing. Confessing. Professing the Word of God. Because it is your profession. Amen? Amen. Right, church? Amen. There's things I must do. He tells me, and if you should know this because I've gone over this Scripture many times in Mark 11... How he says, you can say to a mountain, whosoever shall say unto a mountain. But he's telling you to tell your mountain to get out in Jesus' name. Amen? Now he's given you your authority. Where? In the name of Jesus. He's given you the power to do it. Where? In the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. Right? This is amazing. How many times have I thrown in at the feet? You just do it. I'll go about my life, but you you fixed my life, God. Now, 40-something years... Yeah, I'm still in my 40s. Just barely. 40-something years, I've got into these messes. Now, you fix it tonight, because I've got something to do tomorrow. Jesus, in love, just like I am, is telling them, if you can believe, if you can believe, if... If you can believe, all things are possible to you, believer. Amen. Thank you. I love this. Listen to this. Let me continue on. All things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears. Look at this, church. I'm going to show you something else. Lord, I believe. Help thy my unbelief. I don't make sense. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. You mean I can have two opposing forces? Absolutely. Right here's my problem. Y'all ever seen tug of war? Yeah. You take two big old burly guys, you get them on the other side of the creek, and you sit there like a... You seen that? That's belief and unbelief. Seen it? 
One thing is telling you the Word of God is true. Amen. And by His stripes I'm healed. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right? You've heard that voice, right? That's called the Spirit of the living God. He's on this side of the bank. You know who's on the other? A liar. The thief. And he's going like this. He's got his, uh, he's got his talons dug in deep in the ground and he's got the little demons behind him pulling. And he's telling you, you can't stand on the Word of God. You've tried it. Your prayers are not answered. Hear him? And then there is that thing again, that negative force. Fear. Just one little bit of fear caused Peter to begin to sink. And the more fear that's generated and the more fear I receive, my troubles are coming. Amen. Amen. I'm going down in the dark. The teachings of Jesus are miraculous. This Bible is extraordinary to me because in these little things that I've read over countless times, God will always show you something new. You can believe, church, and still have unbelief. This is amazing. Ain't that amazing, John? I've sat there and I've thought about this, you know, several times. I, Lord, I know I believe, but I can sit here and tell myself over and over, man, I know God heals because look at me. God's healed me. Amen. Numerous times. And I don't mean this boastfully at all. I have struggled. But God's healed me and you can't take it. I'm, I'm saved because of my King. I'm going to heaven because of Jesus Christ. Not anything I've done because of Jesus. Amen? I'm telling you, believing and unbelieving is a war that we're in. Paul warned me to put on the full armor. The full armor. He says, resist the devil after I have submitted to my king. Resist the devil, and then, and only then, he'll flee. Are you resisting the devil? Are you standing your ground? When the unbelief comes, do you cast that out? If you don't, you should. Now the demons, they're good because I showed you where the Spirit tore him. Amen? It was a Spirit. Not every affliction is, but sometimes it is, according to the Word of God. Amen? All right. You've been given authority. But if you think you're just going to pray one time and just everything's going to be hunky-dory, beloved, we know better. Amen? Amen? I can have belief and still have to battle unbelief. Amen. Now Jesus, if you go to the other counts, He taught them. They asked Him privately, Lord, why could we not cast Him out? And He told them plainly, He says unbelief. And he told them right here, you faithless, perverse generation, you unbelieving generation, how long am I going to have to be with you guys that won't believe? He, he said that, amen? But now he gives you the key. He says you can get rid of this unbelief by prayer and fasting. That's right. By prayer and fasting. You really got a situation in life? Fast, Fast and pray. I'm serious. Amen. You know, I've had people come up and say, well, I just don't have the faith you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you don't say that. Yes, you do. Amen. We've been given the measure of faith. One person may do this much with it. The other one can believe for this. And all things are possible for who? Those who believe. We all know about unbelief. What I want to show you when I'm ending here, and I've done good, is fear will stop you from receiving your goal and your victory in Christ. Now, I can assure you that any time you fold your cards... You're done. Yep. It's over. And it isn't because God failed or God quit. Okay? It isn't because the word, you cannot use the word to stand on. Do you hear me? That's right. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I will bring you the truth. If I quit, I know my end is defeat. That's it. Amen. The devil's tricks, he'll make the waves bigger. Okay, he'll, he'll get the boat to really rock it. He'll cause the boy to really foam and gnaw and gnash and cause a scary thing. So why? So that I could see what I'm saying? If one of us right now, and God forbid, but one of us did have an epileptic, I mean a bad one, you know, it causes people, you stand back in a gas. If you've seen it, it's, it's horrific, amen? Yeah. It will cause me to have fear. Oh my God. 
Bless his heart. Oh, he hit his head when he fell. See, see how my fear's growing? See it? Oh. Oh, he oh he may have swallowed his tongue. And see, my fear just grows. And as my fear grows, my belief diminishes. So today I hope you leave with this. Fear. Fear can stop you from receiving. Amen. Amen. Notice what Jesus said though when they seen him walking on the water. He says, Be of good cheer. Be happy. Don't be afraid. For it is I. Somebody receive that in Jesus' name. Okay? Be of good cheer. Be not afraid. For it is I. Who? The King of Kings. Amen. God bless. Don't forsake praying in the Spirit. Let your spirit pray and then do what He says. I know sometimes, listen, it's not going to look like the thing to do, okay? Lots of times it'll be, that just don't seem right. Amen. But your, He, the Holy Spirit, will never guide you wrong. It'll always be for the good. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless y'all.